Palestinian resistance icon Lela Khalid is in South Africa. In 1969, Khalid made history by becoming the first woman to hijack an airplane. She was only 25 years old at the time. She was later released in a prison exchange deal. Khalid is a member of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and currently lives in Amman, Jordan. She will be delivering several lectures and will be the guest of honor at a boycott, divestment and sanction South Africa, that's BDS dinner, where she'll be part of a special fundraising effort in aid of Palestine. A lot of controversy surrounded the announcement of Khalid's planned visit here. Groups like the South African Jewish Board of Deputies labeled, labeled her a terrorist who's not welcome here in our country. But Khalid has been officially welcomed in the country by the government and joins us now live in our Port Elizabeth studio this morning. A very good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. <clears throat> it's not the first visit. You visited South Africa before. You've uh, met with Nelson Mandela when you were here in South Africa. What do you make of the controversy that now surrounds your visit to South Africa? You know, in every uh, uh, event, uh, some people uh, dislike it. But uh, we have to see whether this is the majority or the minority. I have been welcomed by the people, by the government, by parliamentarians. This means uh, that uh, this visit is on the right track and it helps a lot our comrades, our friends uh, to uh, go for their goals of the BDS and uh, uh, extending solidarity to the Palestinian people. Uh, and those minorities Sometimes they, uh, they find that they are isolated in the society in general. So let them speak. Yani we are in a country who has uh, uh, freedom of speech to anyone. But uh, a time will come when they will discover that uh, we are on the right track and they are on the wrong track. Let's move on to your visit to South Africa. Just tell us a little bit about your itinerary, what you'll be doing over the next week or so. Uh, I'll be uh, going to uh, Durban, to Cape Town, uh, to uh, help uh, BDS, promote BDS. And uh, uh, up till now, uh, uh, the visit is successful because more people are joining and uh, 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 want to help uh, through this movement and through other uh, uh, organizations or committees uh, uh, expressing their solidarity uh, to the Palestinians. We know very well that uh, people in South Africa feel with those people who are still living under oppression, under uh, occupation like the Palestinian people, and they extend their hands to, to help and to support. So uh, it's not uh, weird that uh, I'm on a visit uh, for the help of my people through uh, BDS. That's why I'm calling everybody to join this peaceful movement uh, because uh, it's not the first time in history that uh, BDS campaigns are used to face the uh, uh, oppressors anywhere in the world. But uh, uh, I have to remind that uh, uh, during the apartheid uh, system in, in South Africa, the whole world boycott and isolated that hideous regime. And it helped the struggle of the uh, people of South Africa to gain their independence and to end that uh, regime. And it ended. Uh, this experience has been uh, 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 experienced by the world. And uh, uh, according to the pressure of the people uh, uh, in all continents, the governments changed their minds uh, uh, finally, and they isolated that uh, uh, regime. Uh, except for Israel and uh, the United States. Mm. But at the end of the day, and after a long way to freedom, as Nelson Mandela said, uh, uh, the people of South Africa now is living, living in dignity with the, uh, uh, democracy mm. uh, uh, and uh, extending 
their uh, ex, uh, 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 their support to those who suffer is, are suffering now uh, uh, like they suffered uh, uh, before because only those who suffer feel with, with each other. I wanted to ask you a little bit to give us the historical uh, context of the relationship between South Africa and Palestine, uh, the, the battles fought and won together in the past, and maybe tell us about the relationship today. And the relation uh, was uh, because we, we both people uh, were uh, facing apartheid. You end apartheid in South Africa, but uh, we didn't up till now. And it's not only apartheid system, but also occupation and uh, keeping the refugees uh, uh, refugees outside of their homeland and uh, neglecting, uh, I mean Israel, neglecting the rights of the Palestinians to be back to their homelands and uh, uh, villages. Uh, according to the United Nations Resolution uh, 194, which calls Israel to accept the return of the Palestinians who were uh, 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 driven out by force in 1948 and also according to the all uh, resolutions to the Palestinian cause taken in the United Nations. But uh, uh, Israel denies uh, uh, all these resolutions because it uh, 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 considers itself upon the international law. And this uh, by itself uh, the uh, people of South Africa, their organizations, ANC and uh, unions, COSATO, uh, now uh, uh, youth uh, organizations, women organizations, we had this relation before, but now it's uh, uh, more deep and it's going on and we, we every, uh, uh, in every uh, excursion Israel uh, does against our people, like what happened and through the five, uh, uh, past five, uh, six years that uh, Israel uh, uh, launched war against Gaza. Uh, and the last one uh, last year was devastating and it was uh, a Holocaust. So the, pe the people of South Africa are aware of the injustice uh, mm -hmm. that Israel uh, is doing for us and the violations and the uh, killing and the, this uh, uh, brutal uh, policy against the Palestinians, they feel it because they know it. And uh, I'm happy that I'm seeing the new generation is very enthusiastic yeah. and they create new methods for showing and uh, extending solidarity to the Palestinian people. I want, you to, I want to take you back to the siege on Gaza last year. We have a relief organization mm -hmm. in South Africa called the Gift of the Givers. They worked in Gaza yeah. and, and they reported some, some terrible crimes against humanity that were reported. I've got, I've got the, the founder of the Gift of the Givers who I spoke to recently. I just want you to look at a little piece of the interview and then get your reaction to what he said as to what happened in Gaza. Mm -hmm. One lady that I work with has been to South Africa. She has been the distribution for me on my behalf. In the last week, I told her, Allah, how's it going with the distribution? She said the first few days was fine, but now it's very difficult. I said, why? She said, Khadija went around to give out food to the people, as you asked. I said, who is Khadija? She said, Khadija works with us. So I said, what happened? She said she had a big yellow shirt on, big bright light saying, humanitarian worker. She was, went in an ambulance. She was giving out food and Israel struck the ambulance directly. So I said, what happened to Khadija? She said, she's dead. So she said, like this, so many of our workers have been targeted. Yeah. So it becomes very complicated. We even said, as a, as a backup, we will use the UN school to put up a field hospital inside the UN school. How many schools have been targeted? The UN safe. school has been bombed over now. There's no security. It, it There's seems. No. Oh. And the hospital, Al Shifa, we had worked there before. That thing got hit. So where do you put the people? There you have uh, the founder of the Gift of the Givers talking about aid workers being targeted and shot and bombed. Uh, children, schools, women being targeted. Are these crimes against humanity? And, and do you expect uh, international org organizations like the ICC, like the UN, to step in and do something about this? You know, we have been to the uh, United Nations uh, last month uh, asking the, the, the whole world 
uh, to uh, to put end to this uh, occupation but the answer was no because there is uh, the united states waiting to put the veto this time they they voted no because they knew that they we cannot get a, a resolution anyhow <coughs> in what uh, 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 this organization the uh, working in, in in gaza this is not the first time uh, uh, we know about it i have met some of uh, its members here and there in lebanon on 2006 when the war broke out they were there also and this shows the the, the spirit and the understanding of the people of south africa that they go directly to the where there is danger even they go there and they extend uh, 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 give help to the people now these war crimes up till now israel hasn't been uh, uh, punished that's why when we call uh, uh, for uh, uh, any, uh, as uh, BD, for bds as a means to follow up uh, israel to put sanctions and then to take them to the courts international courts now uh, uh, plo uh, signed the, the uh, uh, declaration of uh, Rome, which is uh, including the ICC, and we are going there to, to charge Israel internationally. And I think now there is a, a big support for this step from our people and from our friends all over the world. We will wait and see. Now the Zionists are working, and the imperialists also, especially the Americans, are working to stop ICC from being, uh, uh, to, maybe they are thinking that to stop its work. Mm. Uh, they, uh, they would say, uh, make excuses that uh, uh, it has no work uh, after what happened, and that's it. Let's stop uh, uh, this issue. But we insist that we will take those war criminals to, uh, to the court and charge them. This is one of the means of facing uh, uh, this uh, hideous uh, apartheid state in, in, in our country. <clears throat> Last week at the African Union summit, African Union leaders made a resolution that they would step out of the International uh, Criminal Court because they feel African leaders are the only ones being targeted by this court. How do you view this and how do you view the decision by the African Union to think about going this route? I think this is, uh, 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 some countries are uh, uh, pressured by uh, the United States to take this step and then they will move another step to go for other countries to take the same uh, attitude. I think it's, it's very dangerous to stop a court where people were under uh, uh, oppression, they were killed, massacres, like what happened in Rwanda, for example, <laughs> and what happened in Kosovo, the same, and uh, they were taken uh, to the uh, to ICC and be charged. But uh, we know that it's more for Africa, but it doesn't mean that uh, the African uh, governments should accept that uh, uh, anyone who makes war crimes shouldn't be uh, punished. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't agree with it, but I think that they have their reasons for it. I understand it, but I don't accept it. I want to come back to your arrival here in South Africa now on Friday morning. Uh, you met with a struggle stalwart, Ahmed Kathrada, and over the years, you've had wonderful relations with other icons like Nelson Mandela. Can you tell us about the welcome you received and maybe uh, give us a little insight into your relationship with Nelson Mandela? You know, anyone in this world uh, uh, considered Nelson Mandela as his own hero because he is the, uh, the hero of the struggle against apartheid. And uh, uh, Nelson Mandela did not mean that he is only a freedom fighter for his people, but for all peoples of the world who are suffering from oppression. Uh, uh, in, 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 in our, uh, uh, with our people, they all know his saying, 
that the freedom of South Africa will be incomplete until the Palestinians get their freedom. This is a vision, a political vision to us. Mm. And it meant a lot. It, it was a message to uh, the people of South Africa that you have to extend your solidarity in different means for those people who are still suffering under occupation. That's why we look, uh, it was very sad for us to lose uh, uh, such a hero, such an icon, that uh, uh, we all read uh, his uh, 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 book, about the long way to freedom. This gave us more strength that those people who were suffering from apartheid, they struggled, sa sacrificed, and uh, went to jails for years and years. Now we have prisoners in Israeli jails uh, is now passing 33 years in jail. They exceeded what the apartheid regime did in South Africa, I mean the Israelis putting people in jail the mm. same way. <coughs> but with learning from this uh, uh, struggle of the people of South Africa gave us hope and uh, the will and the strength. And still the relation is going on and we have good ties with uh, different groups, including the government also, mm. that <coughs> we are still looking forward for more higher steps uh, from South Africa. Uh, I think if, if Nelson Mandela was still alive or uh, is still the president, he would have taken steps higher than just BDS on the uh, uh, yeah. popular level. Uh, uh, I think he will ask the government to, uh, get, uh, to cut ties on the diplomatic uh, level. And like uh, Venezuela, for example, and Bolivia, they, they, they mm. sent the uh, uh, ambassadors, uh, the Israeli ambassadors, and uh, they cut the diplomatic ties, and also uh, on the economical level. And this is the, the practical uh, uh, attitude, uh, uh, I mean, to, you need to move the attitude yeah. from uh, its political level to its practical level. And uh, I think one day uh, we'll hear that the government in South Africa will do that. Uh, we expect it. This week... Uh, and uh, for... Th this yeah. week on Wednesday, uh, the 11th of February, South Africa will celebrate 25 years when Nelson Mandela was released from prison on that day. Can you tell us where were you on that day when you heard the, uh, w when he was released and, and maybe tell us the emotions that you experienced on that day? You know, when uh, uh, I was living in uh, Syria at that time, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we were celebrating his release also because as I told you, we considered Nelson Mandela is for all of us and for uh, peace lovers, for those who are still struggling, for those who are still suffering. Uh, you go to our offices everywhere, you see uh, photos uh, of Nelson Mandela on, on the walls of our offices. It shows uh, 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 the, uh, that a prison cannot be closed forever on prisoners. Our prisoners in Israeli jails, they were uh, 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 singing, dancing in their cells and telling the Israelis, your end is the same as the end of the apartheid. They told them this and they were put in isolation, those who celebrated the release of Nelson Mandela. I'm sure that every prisoner in Israeli jail look upon this experience that in spite of the long terms that they uh, spend in, uh, uh, they are uh, spending in, in jails, that look what happened. They were isolated in, in, in uh, yeah. Robin Island and yet they were released and they uh, were victorious when they went out from prison. So this gives also our prisoners mm. who, who are sentenced for uh, not only for life for once, for life 
four times plus 100 years. Imagine. <laughs> now, this, uh, they want to, uh, of course, to, uh, I mean, nobody will live uh, uh, for hundreds of years. But this gave uh, 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 those prisoners, not only in uh, Israeli jails, but yeah. in other jails in the world, uh, for pol political activists, that one day they will break the doors of the uh, uh, of the uh, jails with the help of uh, their people and be free. A final question, uh, uh, ma'am. What would you consider as the minimum conditions for a negotiated settlement in Palestine? Uh, let me uh, tell you, apartheid regime in, in uh, South Africa took four years when they began to uh, uh, negotiate Nelson Mandela in prison. Mm. But on parallel, the uh, struggle was escalating. And by the isolation of, this, uh, uh, of that regime from the whole world, uh, except for Israel and the United States, uh, uh, they were obliged to go for negotiations and accept the conditions of the ANC at that time. In our case, since 21 years, uh, the Palestinians, uh, uh, our leadership signed Oslo Accords with Israel. Israel denied most of its items and uh, behaved the other way and not committed to any item of this uh, accord. Even Sharon himself in 2001, and the, uh, 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 those accords were signed in 1993, by, uh, sponsored by the uh, uh, Americans in, in the White House, uh, where Arafat went and signed that uh, treaty, uh, that uh, uh, agreement. Uh, uh, Israel went on with its policy, the same thing, as if nothing happened. They did not release all prisoners, still building uh, settlements, confiscating land, put more people in prison, assassinating uh, 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 our leaders, like uh, Abu Ali Mustafa, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, Rantisi, they, these names, and still going on the same policy. They did not change. And uh, uh, they denied a Palestinian state and Jerusalem at, as its capital. They deny our right for right for return. They deny our right for self-determination. Now, after 21 years, uh, is it possible to go with this uh, uh, failure again to go to negotiate? We learned from the negotiations of the Vietnamese when the Americans were bombing all Vietnam. They used to go to Paris to, to meet them. The first uh, point on the agenda of the uh, 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 meeting at that time, that uh, the withdrawal of the Americans. When the Americans refused, they said, OK, we meet you on the ground there. And they were obliged to leave. And the Americans fled Vietnam afterwards. This is the way to oblige the occupant, the war criminals, uh, the apartheid system to oblige them and not to, uh, to, to beg them to go to negotiations. We have been uh, doing that, and uh, this is the result now. More excursions against our people. They are putting uh, 1 million and 800,000 people in Gaza in a big jail uh, for eight years now. And now it's all totally closed upon them. What do you expect from that? Uh, I, I'm not asking you. <laughs> I, I'm uh, just saying uh, that uh, don't expect except one choice for us is resistance. And resistance by all means, including armed struggle. This is the only way that we can liberate our land uh, with. Without that, I will remind uh, uh, the audience uh, two months ago and less than two months, uh, uh, a minister called Ziad Abu Ain was rallying with uh, going uh, to the land to plant uh, olive trees that the Israelis cut from the Palestinian uh, uh, land, and they killed him in front of all the cameras. 
what happened? Nobody was charged for it. Mm. Where can we charge these people? It's always with the help of others. Is, uh, uh, and uh, going to the international uh, uh, criminal court to charge those people. And negotiations now is not for, uh, uh, we, we cannot get uh, anything out of it. There are Oslo Accords and nothing uh, uh, was yeah. implemented. Th because Israel, as I, I, as I said, just give me one second, considers itself above international law. Daily, they violate international. They don't care about international law because they are backed by United States and, and many other countries. That's why we are calling uh, to, to widen the BDS campaigns everywhere in the world. I thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, that's P Palestinian resistance icon Leila Khaled. She's in South Africa. Uh, with the, the BDS campaign to raise, to raise funds uh, for Palestine. But let's have a look at what you've said.